DeepSeek is all the hype right now. It came out of nothing and disrupted the whole multi-billion dollar Gen AI field. Or if you're a viewer from the future, meaning like a year from now, 2026 maybe, you might be wondering, what the heck is DeepSeek? So what is it? It is the first truly open reasoning large language model. Reasoning is a new paradigm in large language models where the model is trained to not answer straight away, but spend some time, aka tokens, to think about the question and therefore come up with a way more sophisticated answer. That makes the models a lot smarter, but as you can imagine, also quite a lot slower. One of the reasons why DeepSeek is making those insane waves is because it comes out of China, out of all places, which is super surprising because China is very heavily sanctioned when it comes to acquiring modern GPUs, where everyone thought this is the most important thing to create cutting edge innovation. While the hedge fund company that owns and developed DeepSeek, yes, it is a hedge fund company, have done a great service to the open source AI community by releasing the model and the code and also a really good paper detailing a lot of the details. The hosted model that you find on deepseek.com is hosted directly in China and is therefore applicable to Chinese data protection laws. That means it's probably never been more attractive to host your own model. And guess what platform is awesome for hosting your own models? Yes, Watson X. I will walk you through the process of downloading the model, uploading it to Watson X, and actually deploying it as a custom foundation model. That process is not specific to DeepSeek and applies to pretty much any model you can find on Hugging Face. The whole process is described here in the official documentation, and it's not rocket science, but it does have some caveats, and I will walk you through it so you can get up and running as fast as possible. The major steps that we have to do is well, find a model and check if it's compatible. We know what you want, we want DeepSeek. Then we have to upload those files into a cloud object storage. And we're gonna do that really simply by downloading it to our local machine and then re-uploading it. After that, we can tell what's next, where to find those files and create the so-called model asset. So this whole part is just handling files, moving files around and telling what's next, where to find them. After that, we can create the actual deployment, which means the actual magic under the hood where the model is actually loaded into a GPU, then we can use it in the prompt lab. So let's check point number one. That is actually the first interesting thing I wanna point out. We do need a standard plan for Watson X AI. That sounds like it should be the standard, right? Well, it's not. It's actually the, the largest plan that IBM offers for Watson X AI. I know it's confusing, but we have to check that we actually have the standard plan. It will not work with a light plan or the essentials plan. The second point is that the model you wanna use has to be compatible with the text generation interface developed by Hugging Face. For the very most models, particularly all the mainstream models, this is not really an issue. They're either, either TGI compatible out of the box or you find compatible alternatives. Then you also need a config JSON, a tokenizer JSON, and the model files itself have to be in safe tensors format. Sounds complicated, but that's pretty much true for all models on Hugging Face, at least the mainstream ones. Talking about Hugging Face, here we are on huggingface.co. In case you don't know it, it's kind of the GitHub for large language models. So every kind of model that is open source will be on here. And if we type in here, and we don't even have to type it, it's like the, the first hit here. DeepSeek AI, DeepSeek R1. The, the, the R1 part is actually important. That's the, the reasoning model. There's also a V3, which is the non-reasoning model. Also a very interesting model, but not what the hype is about. So here we are greeted with a very comprehensive description. And if we click here, we can see the actual files. And if we scroll down, you can see that those are a lot of files. 163 to be precise. And every single one of them got four to, I don't know, five, six, seven gigabytes. So that adds up to be somewhere around 700 gigabytes. And that is pretty gigantic. That is because we are looking at the most powerful unquantized version of DeepSeek. It pretty much blows my mind that we can just download this here, we can run this if we have the hardware, we can build our product around it. This is MIT license. We can actually make money off this. But for many use cases, this is plenty, plenty overkill. Let's look into a few alternatives that are a bit more lightweight. Luckily, the model card already provides us some links. If we scroll down here, we can see some alternatives. The very large model that we just looked into uses a 37 billion parameter model as a base model, which results in a total of 671 billion parameters, which are those 700 gigabytes that we've just seen. But luckily, there are way smaller versions that also perform pretty well, but are well, substantially easier to handle. 
One of them here is DeepSeq R1 Distill Llama 8B, which uses 8 billion parameter base model compared to the 37 billion parameter grain model that is used in the original large DeepSeq model. If we check that out, uh, and if we jump over to files and versions, we see that is that is a lot more manageable. There are like, what's that, 15 gigabytes or something? That's the one you're gonna be using now. What I'm showing you here has no size limitation. We could use the 700 gigabyte model as well, but just downloading it to my laptop, uploading it again, that's gonna take like literally forever. Oh, how do you download a model here from Hugging Face? I mean, I ain't seeing a download button. And yeah, I honestly don't know why they don't just have a download button, probably because the browser won't really support such large files, at least not properly. So there are other methods of downloading that you have to use. There is a pretty good CLI, uh, or you can also use a Python library to do that. The way I did it is using Git. There is a Git extension that's called Git large files. Uh, you've got to have that installed. Once you have that, you can do a Git clone and just use the URL that you can find in here, it's a little bit hidden. Oh yeah, that actually gives you the very detailed instructions that you need to use. And then you can just git clone this repo. And well, that's gonna take some time, depending on your download speed. For me, it was like half an hour or something. And that gives you the files here on your local system. And it's just a bunch of small files and two pretty large files. That's all it is. One more trick you can do here is simply delete the git folder. We don't need it if we don't want to change anything about this. And it's just really big. Let's throw that out. Now we need to upload the model to a cloud storage provider. In that case, we're using IBM Cloud, but we could just as well put it on AWS or Azure. We can easily connect to other providers through what's next. For that, we will create a bucket. DeepSeek Max Yesh. It needs to be a globally unique name. So let's go with that. We actually don't need to change anything here. Just create the bucket. Okay. Obviously, there are a lot of different ways to upload data now to that bucket. There, there's a CLI tool. There's a, you can actually use the AWS S3 CLI and SDKs. They are compatible. But what I want to show you here is kind of a special feature that is only available in IBM Cloud. So here, through the UI, you can actually do a upload using Aspera. Aspera is a very specialized tool to handle large file transfers. It's got a patented secret sauce, which makes it pretty unique. And it's very popular, for example, in the movie industry, where they transfer gigantic files all over the place. And it's actually integrated right here in your browser in the UI, which is pretty awesome. I already installed it. If you're doing it for the first time, it's gonna prompt you to install a Chrome extension and also a desktop application. So it's gonna take you like 10 minutes to set it up. But once you've done that, it's really simple. It just works through your browser. There's nothing special you have to do. And it's gonna do file upload the way you would want file upload to work, which means it's gonna be very fast and it's not gonna make your internet connection unusable. So this is a very nice way of uploading those large language model files. Really simple, just upload folder then navigate to that folder that we created with git choose that folder upload and here we go you've seen there are a few iterations here yeah that's gonna take some time and while this is uploading in the meantime we can check the plan that we're using in our what's next ai instance you do that through the ibm cloud not through what's next directly if you look here ai and machine learning in this case i've got multiple instances if i check this one here and i go to plan and i can see that this little check mark here is on the standard plan and not on the essentials or the light plan. So we're good to go. Oh, the upload is finished now. We see that we've got all the files here and now we can tell what's next, where to find the model. I just jumped into a new project in what's next. Important, we are not on IBM Cloud anymore. We are on the what's X platform now and we need to create a storage connection. For that, we create, click on new asset and connect to data source. Just use the, the cloud object storage connection. And here we can select an instance, which is pretty nice since we're using the same account on IBM Cloud and on Watson X. It is already connected in some way and we can just simply choose the cloud object storage instance that we want to use. Oh, we need to provide the bucket name. I already copied it, so I can just paste it in here. This uh, URL is pre-filled. Now here are two important details. We need to use personal credentials and maybe even a bit more obscure, but we do need to provide an access key and a secret key. 
So access key and secret access key, that's HMAC, hash-based message authentication code. That is a pretty common thing in any cloud storage solutions. AWS S3 uses it all the time. I'm gonna show you now where we can get that access key and secret access key. Because for that, we have to jump back into the IBM cloud and here we are on the bucket level, but we can jump back to the instance level and we need to create service credentials. We can just simply create new credentials. Let's give them a name. And as a role, we just use writer. And very important, include HMAC because that's what we're actually after. And now add, if we scroll down here, we can see them here. And here is the access key and the secret access key that we need. So let's just copy paste them. So looks right. So we don't need anything else. We can just simply test the connection. And that is good. And now we can create that connection. Awesome. So that was the first step we needed to do in Watson X. We needed to create that connection for Watson X to access this part of a cloud object storage. But now we need to actually register the model that is stored within this location. To do that, we need to jump into deployments here. Let me create a new one just for demo purposes. Uh, all that stuff is pre-filled and we need to create, select our Watson X AI runtime here. Okay, view new space. Now we've got a brand new empty deployment space. And what we need to do now is promote the connection that we created to this deployment space. So for that, I jumped back into the project. And if we click here, we can do promote to space. Now we just select it here and promote and close. Now we jump back to our deployment space and now we can actually create that connection to the model. See, we've got that storage connection. You can already feel that we're getting closer. We can now choose custom foundation model. So now we just click here. Oh yeah, we need to enter our credentials again. The same ones that we used to create the connection. And here we can see our folder. If we click on it, it's gonna expand and you will see all the stuff that is in here, but we don't need to dig any deeper because we're just gonna uh, select the folder and click next. Well, and here it already is, like it, it detected the correct architecture, it corrected and detected the correct name. We can add a description here, but we don't need that. And it also correctly parsed a lot of the deployment parameters that are needed. And now we just have to select a software specification. I'm just gonna go with a recommended one and import. So we are almost there. Now we just have to create a new deployment. And here we give it a name and a serving name. The serving name has to have no caps and only underscores. That's pretty much all we need. Configuration is predefined. It falls under the category of small large language models, which is gonna cost us $5 an hour. Create, and we see it initializing here. This might take a few minutes. So now that we've got it all running, we can start working with it. So here we've got our test page. We can test it here but that's just like a really quick sanity test. Yeah, it worked, but this is not how you can reasonably interact with the model. The main thing we can find here are the endpoints that we can use to access the model from any application. But the easiest way for now to interact with the model is through the prompt lab. And we already have it pre-selected up here, but let me show you what it looks like if you wanna explicitly choose it. You see, we've got our list of all the models that are pre-shipped in what's next. And down here, covered by my face, down here is our DeepSeq model. And now let's start using it. A very simple question. How do I change the oil on a car? And let's generate. Okay, here we can see the inner monologue going. I need to figure out how to change the oil on my car. First, I should probably start by gathering the necessary tools. This is really interesting to see what the model is actually thinking about. You know, it keeps on going and going and going. So at the, this point, it hit the 2048 token limit of the prompt lab here. Um, so we won't be able to see the final response, but this does not apply when you use it through an API. So that means what we have here is perfect for any application that you host or for any agentic workflow that you wanna run. So that's it, that's what I wanted to show you. Bring your own model on Watson X in the example of DeepSeek R1. I hope you learned something. And as always, if you've got any questions, just shoot me a comment or shoot me a message on LinkedIn or there are many ways to reach me. Bye.